two, three. Okay, I will do it at the end because okay. I want to, but yes, I will do it at the end and I will make a special video for that. Okay, so that was the first thing. I will get back to that. Next thing, 59. Okay, so, so what I did, I changed my slides. I changed all my slides. I updated all the slides. So for example, here, you have something moving at a constant speed, okay? So you see, you make a number line and every second it's covering the same distance. So I have all the equations here of kinematics. So this is the acceleration equals zero, the acceleration equals five. And, and here you have the position as a function of time, you see? So what I did for you, I make a table there. I did a table there and you see at t equals zero, you plug it into here, what do you get? 10. At t equals 1, you get 15. At t equals 2, you get 20. At t equals 3, 25. At t equals 4, 30. So you see that for each step of 1, the car is moving 5 meters. Okay? So that means the rate is constant for every second there is a displacement of five meters. So five meters per second, that means you have a constant velocity of five. And then you see the velocity here is positive. That means it's moving to the right. And here you want to look at the number line. Okay, so you just look at the number line. You see it's moving in this direction and every second is going, it's covering five and five and five and five, okay? So that's my update on this slide. And then I did an update on that one. So in that case, it's moving to the left. Okay, you see how it's moving to the left? And you see the velocity is what, positive or negative? Negative, so if it's negative, it's moving to the left, okay? And then here you see the position as a function of time. So at t equals zero is at 50, t equals one, it's at 35 and then 40, and then 35, and so forth, and so on, right? At t equals, um, and then you, you keep going down, that should be 30. So it means you start at t equals zero, you're here. One second later, you're 45 meters on the number line. So five meters down, five meters down, and so forth, and so on. Okay, so you want to make sure that you understand that. Now, the, the velocity is negative, that means it's moving to the left and you are moving to the left okay so what else did i do here we discussed that last time so each time you have a parabola okay each time here for x versus time it's not a line that means you are either speeding up or slowing down okay so that means the acceleration it's not zero so you see here the acceleration is two. So it means every second, the speed is increasing by two. So you see here at t equals zero, it's gonna be five. And t equals one is gonna be seven. And t equals two is nine. So for every step in one second, you are moving faster by two meters per second. Okay, so the acceleration is how fast it's getting faster. And then uh, here you have position versus time. So if I ask you, what is the slope of position versus time? What is the physical quantity of the slope? The, what physical quantity the slope represents here? You see, rise is in meter, run is in second. So meter per second is going to be the velocity very good so you see that the velocity keep increasing because the slope keep increasing okay um you see that the velocity is always positive so it's moving to the right that will be the kinematic equation you see initial position is 10 so initial position is 10 at t equals zero it's 10 on the number line when you start your stopwatch Initial velocity is five. So when you stop, you start your stopwatch, you were already moving. 
and then you increase your velocity by two, which means that every second you go farther and farther and farther away. So if you use that table here, you use that kinematics equation. So use that equa equation, you plug the time into here. So at t equals zero, you're gonna have 10, t equals one, you know, 10 plus five plus one is 16 and so forth and so on. But you see that for every step in one second, here it doesn't stay constant because you, you move farther and farther and farther away. Does it make sense? So here I try to summarize everything. Uh, position, if, if, if it's not moving, the position stays the same. It's moving at a constant speed or constant velocity, you're gonna have a line. If it's speeding up or even slowing down, you're gonna have a parabola. Here you have the velocity. So here that will be, you are not moving. So the velocity of course is zero. Here the velocity is constant. And here the velocity is increasing because you are spinning up. No acceleration, constant velocity, no acceleration. And uh, constant acceleration here, that means you are spinning up at a constant rate. So that's why you have a line. And I summarize everything here. Okay. If the velocity is positive, you are moving to the right. If the velocity is negative, you are moving to the left. Now, the sign for acceleration just means the force. So if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, you are spinning up. If velocity and acceleration have opposite sign, you are slowing down. Okay? Okay, and then it's a quick, quick, okay. Oh, we, was, we stopped here. So in that case, it's a typical problem where which, which car is moving at a constant velocity, the red or, or the blue? The red, very good, because you have a line. So if position versus time, you have a line, that means it's moving at a constant velocity. Same direction, same speed. What about the blue? Speeding up, very good, you have a parabola. Uh, so this one is moving and then at a constant speed. So when you start your stopwatch, it was already moving. This one was at rest and then it catch up on the red one. So that's a typical problem of a police officer hiding at rest. It's seeing you and zoom, spinning up and give you a ticket. So I forgot. So this one has no acceleration. This one has an acceleration. Let's see if it works. Not too fast. So I have two, two zero. Okay, two zero zero ten. Zero ten and then two and then zero. So the, the blue one, the blue one start at rest when you start your stopwatch, but it has an acceleration. When you start your stopwatch, the red car has no acceleration. It's moving at a constant velocity, but it was already moving when you start your stopwatch. Is that clear? So typical, the police officer is hiding, so he's at rest. You are, you know, cruising at a constant uh, speed, but over the speed limit. So it's gonna catch, catch up, boom. See, it's catching, catching up here at that time. Okay. Okay. So how we. So the question is, at what time they will be at the same place and at the same time? 
Can you give me the equation of this line? It's going to be x equals, so it's a straight line, yes? So is there a y-intercept? No. Um, is there a slope? So what is the slope? 10. What about the blue one? Which e uh, kinematic equation I'm going to use? I'm going to use the one. So here there was no acceleration. So the kinematic equation is V0t plus um, 0 0.5 8 t square. So for the red one, this, this term does not exist because the acceleration is zero. But for the blue one, what's the velocity? Initial velocity is zero. You see the slope here is zero. So it's going to be 0 0.5. What's the acceleration? No, the, the acceleration. Look at the acceleration for the blue one. Two, two. T squared. So it's going to be uh, half of two is what? One, so t squared. X equals t squared. So how can I solve that problem here when those two lines meet each other? So it's going to be... Um, what? You, you have to put them equal to each other, right? Okay, so you have two equations to two unknown. So what you get, you can solve that, okay? That's easy algebra. Don't, don't stare, do it. So t equals 10 seconds. And you see that's true, 10 seconds here. Yes? For the initial velocity, you said it was zero, and you put 0 0.5. Where did I put 0 0.5? No, no, I put 0. I say this is 0. And then that's 0 0.5 times the acceleration is 2 t square. So that means 1 half of 2, which is 1. So it's the invisible 1, so 1. Okay? Initial velocity here is 0. So here, it's this one was no, at t equals zero. This one is not moving, the blue one. And this one was moving. Yes? When it's not moving, that means you use the same kinematic equation. I mean, there is no acceleration. You use this one as well, but that term does not exist. Does it make sense? Okay, so you have the time t equals 10 seconds. Now, how far? Can you find where is it? So you can use this equation or that equation. So you have x at t equals 10 seconds will be, if you use this equation, it's going to be 10 times 10. So it's going to be 100. And if it's this one, x equals... Um, 10 square, which is also 100. Okay? So it means they're going to meet 10 seconds at 100 meters away from the origin. So they're going to meet here. You see here, it says 100. So they meet here, and then the red one pass. Uh, not the red one, the blue one pass because it's moving faster. So I don't know if I have that in one of the assignments, but it's a typical question with a police officer giving tickets. Okay? And I will get back to that number 10 at the end. I don't know, there is a curse on that number 10. Uh, okay, try to do this one so you can help each other. Uh, you want you just want the equation the equation of uh, motion
Okay, the, the, the box. Okay, here, well, I am here. So, so this, it's, is it moving at a constant velocity or is it spinning up or slowing down? Constant. And the slope is the? So you do rise over run. Here you have meters, here you have seconds. So the slope is? The, the slope is meter per second. It's the velocity, okay? So what's the kinematic equation? X equals V0T plus, let's say you want to write this one, but there is no acceleration. Okay, so you can forget about that. So it's just X, and I forgot the initial position. X0 plus V0T. So what's the uh, Y intercept? Sorry. 10, okay, so I put a 10. It's a line, there is no t square because otherwise it would be a parabola. If it's a line, it's just y equals mx plus b. So what's the slope? For a run of, what do you run here? 10, very good, 10 seconds, you go up by? One. Yeah, one square. But the scale say from 10 to 15, that will be 5. So the slope, it's going to be rise over run. So it's going to be uh, 5 divided by 10 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So it's going to be 0 0.5t. OK? You see how it works? So the initial position on the number line at t equals zero, it's going to be 10. And the velocity is 0 0.5 meter per second. So every second you move by 0 0.5. Or every 10 seconds you move by 5 meters. So this one is also a line. So it's not a parabola. Therefore, it's moving at a constant velocity. Therefore, you're going to have y equals mx plus b. So what's the initial position here? Very good. And then the meter per second, it's the velocity. So let's find the slope for a slope of, uh, a slope of what? Okay, this, we, we need something nice here. Okay, we can, we can do this one. Because see, it's, it's better if it's at the corner. So what's the run here? 15 and the fall, negative 10. Okay, so the slope, the slope, it's going to be uh, negative 10 divided by 15, right? Which is minus 5, minus 0.6. 10 divided by 15, 6, uh, 6, 6, 6, repeating meter per second. So let's say x will be negative 0 0.7 t. So that means it's moving to the left because the velocity is negative. OK? What about here? Is it moving at a constant velocity or is it spinning up? Spinning up because you have a parabola. Parabola means either it's spinning up or slowing down. So what's the equation? X equals 2t squared. Okay, because this is supposed to be t and this is supposed to be the position. So can you find the acceleration? So you look at your kinematic equation, x equals x sub 0 plus v0t plus 0 0.5 at square. 
do we have an initial position? Zero, very good, because look, the y-intercept is zero. Do we have an initial velocity? Uh, initial velocity, do, do you have a initial velocity is in front of the T? Do you, you, do you see a T here? No, I see a T square. Yes, in front of the T square, I have a two. But to have the initial velocity, I need to have a T. Is there a T? No, there was a T square. There was no T, right? So initial velocity is? zero and the initial velocity here is zero because you see the slope here to begin with is zero okay now half of what equals two Four. Four. we did that last time do you remember you have to go over the slides right Okay, so we did that last time too, so 66. Any question? It's good? You just need to know your equations, kinematics equations. Okay, let's, let's do a conceptual question. Yes. Here it says, it's the equation, it's given. Y equals 2x squared, but x is the time and on the y-axis, you have the position. Okay, it's position versus time. Yes? So we did that, uh, some, some of the problem here, we did that uh, here. So go back to slide 50, 51, we did things like this. Okay, just a quick um, Conceptual question. So if you have velocity versus time, the slope is, the slope is what? Velocity versus time. What is run, uh, rise versus run? Acceleration, because you have meter per second per second, yes? So the slope is the acceleration. You want a negative acceleration, but constant. So you want a constant negative slope. Which one will, you, will it? B, C, okay? In that case, you see the velocity stays the same, so there is no acceleration. Here, the velocity increases, there is an acceleration, so you are spinning up, okay? But in that case, you see the acceleration is negative. So what's happening? The velocity decreases, you are slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. What's happening here? What's the velocity here equals to zero? So you stop, and then if you look just the absolute value of the velocity, you, you speed up again. So that will be this. You, you throw something in the air, you slow down, you stop, and you speed up because you reverse your motion. If someone is run, running away from you, you grab that person by the backpack, so that person is gonna slow down, slow down, slow down, stop, you keep pulling, keep pulling, and then it's going to speed up in the opposite direction. So that's one way to look at it. Um, so, uh, so if you have position versus time, what's the slope? Velocity, very good. And if you have a, a slope, velocity versus time, the slope is what? Acceleration. Uh, what's going on here? So we have position versus time. So look at the slope, the slope, the slope, the steepness, the steepness, the steepness, the steepness. Is, it, is the steepness going down or going up? Down, right? Because here you have high steepness, it would be nice to do some skiing here and then Oops, there is no more slope. So what's happening to the slope? It decreases. So what does it mean for the velocity? Slowing down, very good. You see how it works? The slope of position versus time is the velocity. So make sure you do your homework without looking at the tutorial. 
and I will get back to that number 10 soon. Okay, so here, I think uh, here's an example. So this one is good because it's going to introduce what we're going to do next. Same dark because you end like it doesn't have, like you end this. You remember you're saying like if you want to circle, but that will be displacement. So if you start at one point, you go to and you go back, the displacement is zero. If you go back to the same place, displacement is zero. It's not velocity, it's just no, but if the displacement is zero, then the average velocity is zero as well. Because average velocity is delta x over delta t. So the average velocity is the displacement divided by the time. So if the displacement is zero, the average velocity is zero. So in that case, uh, for example, uh, it will be something that you, you are very mad at me because I could not solve that number 10 quickly, but I will. But So you, you take your pen and you do this on the floor, right? You are very upset to do that. So is there an initial velocity if you do that? Yes. Is, is the initial velocity positive or negative? Negative, because it's down. Down is negative, right? You agree? So it's going to speed up. Why is it speeding up? Because of gravity. Gravity is where? Down. So gravity is positive or negative? Negative. Very good. So negative velocity, negative acceleration, and speeding up. So imagine you are on the moon. I don't know what you are doing on the moon. But on the moon, gravity is about negative 2. Okay? So you're still mad at me. Throw your pen on the ground. Gravity is negative 2. So what does it mean? It means if you, take at the, if you look at the velocity, Velocity is going to change by negative 2 every second. That's the meaning of the acceleration. So at t equals 0, you have an initial velocity, okay? because you do this. After one second, how fast it's, is it going? Negative 7, because the velocity changes by negative 2 every second. After 2 seconds, it's going to be negative 9. After 3 seconds, 11, after 4 seconds, 13, and so forth and so on. Do you agree? So you have the acceleration. It's negative. What about the velocity? Just look at the, 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 the axis here. What are these numbers, positive or negative? So it means it's moving down. And if you look at the magnitude, meaning the absolute values, it goes from 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. So it's speed up. And it's a line, which means that the acceleration is constant. Okay? So that means the speed or the velocity is changing by the same amount every second. Now, if you look at the position versus time, you see that will be your kinematic equation. Initial position is 50. You start from here. Initial velocity is negative 5. You do that. And you see there is an acceleration here, minus 1. So half of what is minus 1? It's going to be minus 2. You see how it works? Now you look at the y-axis here. It means you start at uh, 50. So t equals 0, it's going to be at 50. t equals 1, you plug it in. 50 minus 5 minus 1 is going to be 44. t equals 2. That's going to be 50 minus 5 times 2 minus 4 is going to be 36. t equals 3 is going to be 50 minus 5 times 3 minus 9 is going to be 26. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that every second, every second you increase that um, distance here. You, you move further and further down. So that's how it works. So that will be the next unit. It's called the free fall. Free fall is when things are Falling or just this is also free fall. Free fall means there is no air resistance. Any question? Could be also that you are spinning up at left or spinning up at down. 
Okay, so here is another example. You are throwing something in the air. So on the way up, the velocity is positive or negative? Positive, but the acceleration is very good. So they have opposite direction. So it's going to do what? Slowing down, very good. Exactly. At the top, the velocity is zero. If I try to trick you and I ask you, is the acceleration zero at the top? No, because gravity is always pulling on the pen, right? Otherwise, it will keep going in space. On the way down, the velocity is, and the acceleration is negative. So they have the same sign. So they are, is it speeding up or slowing down? Speed up, right? Slow down, stop, and speed up. So that's when you throw, you go to the moon, you throw something in the air, slow down, stop, speed up. So if you use that here, at t equals zero, the velocity is 10. You have to give some velocity to begin with. Minus two is eight, minus six, is, uh, minus two is six, and then keep going down. All right, keep going down. Here, the velocity is zero, so it's stop, and then speed up again. So slow down, stop, speed up. What about the positions? Position is moving away from my hand and then it comes back to my hand. It's coming back to my hand. So what's the equation of kinematics? It's gonna be the initial position is zero, initial velocity is 10, okay, t equals zero, it's 10, minus 0 0.52, that two is your acceleration, minus two is your acceleration, t squared. So you plug the time here, look what you get. T equals zero, what do you get? If you plug T equals zero here, you're gonna get zero. If you plug one, it's gonna be 10. Minus one is gonna be nine. T equals two is gonna be 16, keep going up. T equals three, 21, 24, 25. And what's going on if you keep plugging numbers? Very good, it's gonna go back down. Okay, so the position will go uh, toward the origin. And at t equals 10, if you plug 10 here, if you plug t equals 10 into that equation, you're going to find 0. 10 seconds later, and go back to 0. You see how it works? So it's an introduction. So what uh, is coming next? So 10 seconds to go up and down. How long to get to, to the maximum here? Five seconds, makes sense? Everything is symmetric. Five to go up, five to go down. So the, the time of flight is twice the time it takes to go up or the time it takes to go down. Okay, so talk to each other and see if you can find the kinematics equation for X. All the kinematics equation. Find me the all the kinematics equation given this. Uh, let's see. Okay, don't don't uh, wait for me. Do it. Let's let's do it on your own. Just let's write down the equation. So that will be for x. So first of all, the first thing you want to do, no, I just want the equation for x, I want the equation for v, and I want the v square equals v zero square, okay? So I want you to use the kinematics equation, but apply to this case. So I want all of them. 
So the first thing you do is to make a x, y, uh, x, x, um, so the y axis here. You want to, want to have the y axis, so this is zero and this is plus. So first of all, is it is it um, nice to have x or is it better to have y? Are we moving along the x or are we moving along the y? Y, okay, so we want to find the y. So it's the same equation. What is the equation? Initial position plus initial velocity plus 0.5 a t squared. So you take that equation and you plug whatever it says here. So we want to find the kinematic equation for the position just in that case. So what's the initial position? Zero, so it's zero. Do we have an initial velocity? Up or down? Okay, up. 20, so I'm gonna put 20 T plus 0 0.5. Do we have the acceleration? Negative 9.8 T squared. So Y equals 20 T minus 4.9 T squared. So that will be the kinematic equation for the position. So what does that mean? It means at t equals 1, I know exactly where it's, it's going to be. At t equals 2, I can find, you know exactly where it's going to be, and so forth and so on. What about the velocity? So v equals what? v0 plus a t. So what's the v, uh, initial velocity is? Initial velocity. 20, because otherwise it stay in your hand, right? It's not going anywhere. What's the acceleration? T. And that will be your equation for the velocity. Okay? Now uh, what else do we want? We want also, maybe we want to see this one. No, well, that's enough. We have the position and, and we have the velocity. Oh, we missed one. What's, what's the acceleration? Okay, so with that we can we can send uh, we can send a rover on the moon. That's all you need. Kinematic equation, Newton's law, and you can send something on the moon. Uh, except Elon Musk last time failed, but we keep the hope high. That's all you need. With those equations, you can predict an ob if an object is um, leave Earth, what it, where it's going to be at what time. Any question? Okay, let's do free fall. So free fall, it's, uh, it's the same thing, same equations, but instead of working on the x-axis, you're going to work on the y-axis, up and down. And then for free fall, which means there is no air resistance, either you are, you know, dropping something, either you are mad and you're still, you know, push toward the ground or you throw something in the air like this. So that will be free fall. So in all the problem of free fall, we're going to use gravity. Gravity, we're going to suppose in class that gravity is negative 10 meter per second per second instead of negative 9.8 to simplify, to make things easier. When you are solving for the assignment, take negative 9.8. So acceleration to, due to gravity on Earth is in magnitude 10 meter per second per second, it's, except it has a direction. So direction, it's going to be negative because weight is always pulling you down to earth. Okay, so you can also say if you if you if you convert meter to my second to hour, here it's going to be also twenty two miles per hour per second. So it means if I if I go up, 
up there, you know, I fall for one second, I drop for one second. How fast I'm gonna hit the ground with 22 miles per hour after one second. After two seconds, so I'll go to the second floor. No, uh, 44, yes, 44 miles per hour. So if you fall for one second, that's fine. So maybe fracture here and there. 44, that will be broken bones. What, what about three seconds of falling? 66, so it start to be bad. 66 miles per hour, it's like you are driving on the highway, you know, and you have a crash. So not, not good. And, and then four seconds, forget it, right? 88 miles per second falling down, that's bad. That's if we neglect air resistance. So if you neglect air resistance, that means if you take all the air out, in that case, Galileo found out that regardless of their mass, all objects fall at the same rate. Okay, so they hit the ground at the same time. So if you go to the moon and you have an apple and a feather, you drop them, they reach the ground at the same time. We will explain why, but that was the finding of Galileo back then. And he's the father of physics because he's the first one really to rely on observations and experiment. You see when they are falling down here, you see how every second it's moving farther. So the distance increases and increases and increasing. So I have a short movie for you. Let's see. I don't know if never understand the sound. I hope the sound will work. Uh, Kim, we copied a both solar wind. And no, the sound doesn't work. And a penetrometer drum in the. Maybe this. Uh, Kim, we copied a both solar wind and a trometer drum in the ET. What should I do to make it? Oh, maybe there is a plug somewhere. No plug. Uh, Kim, we copied a both solar wind. Well, okay, it's, a, it's fine, you should be able to hear it. Uh, Kim, we copied a both solar wind and a penetrometer drum in the ETB. Not quite yet, I haven't put the solar wind in yet, but I will shortly. I want to watch this. Do you have a, a good picture there? I've got the... Beautiful picture, Dave. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our Falcon, and I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? So that was done on the moon, okay? Except if you believe that we've never been on the moon and all that is uh, fake. Like, yeah, vacuum chamber. T talking about vacuum chamber, you, you, can, you can do uh, that experiment Common here. Wisdom. Three. So here they, he has a tube and there is a vacuum here. That's why it's called a vacuum chamber, but it's a small one. And they pump, you can pump the air out. And here you have a feather and you have a penny. And if you remove the air, two, so then one. they're going to reach the ground at the same time. If you don't remove the air, of course, the feather will take more time because of air resistance. 
So I will put, um, there is a, a video here. Uh, I will put that in canvas talking about vacuum chamber. That's a vacuum chamber. So maybe, maybe that's what they did. This right? is NASA's because space power facility near Cleveland, Ohio. And it is the world's big. Cameras on, two, one, release. So that's a real vacuum chamber. So it's really moving at a constant, uh, constant acceleration and they both have the same acceleration, the feather um, and the apple. <laughs> yeah, he's so happy. He, he's very famous too. He he is is a physicist who works on string theory. Okay, so you you know the story about Galileo. What did they say? How well did they say he did his experiment? Okay, so that was Newton. The apple tree is Newton. Newton. Um, came up with gravity, but before that there was Galileo. And they say he was dropping, you know, masses from the the Tower of Pisa, right? But that never happened because uh, at the time there was no stopwatch. Okay, so even if you go up to a building and you drop different you 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 drop, I don't know, a tennis ball and a bowling ball. Uh, it's going to go too fast and if you don't have stopwatch and if you don't have photo gates that, that's not a good idea so look what he did the genius okay he had only at the time brain so no electronics didn't have calculus either on his hand so he built what we called an inclined plane so he the, the things are still falling, okay, but gravity is diluted. So it's still falling, but at a lower rate. So instead of having an acceleration of negative 10, maybe you can have an acceleration of negative 2, but the acceleration will still be, will still be constant. So that's what he did. He built those inclined planes. Yes. Yes. He did. That's a good question. Actually, they, they did it. They did have trigonometry and they did have uh, geometry. So that's why, for example, here, you see it makes an angle alpha. Let's say it's 30 degrees. Let's say just that it's 30 degrees about. Let's say it's 30 degrees. You can show that the acceleration, okay, is diluted. So instead of being 10, it's going to be 10 times the sine of that angle here. So that will be this, something like sine 30 degrees. If this is 30 degrees. So it's still kind of falling, okay? But it's falling at a lower rate. So the acceleration to, to gravity is diluted because this is always smaller than one. Do you understand? So it's still falling because the only force acting on it is gravity. If you neglect a resistance, but it doesn't fall as fast. So we can apply the same rule, meaning the masses does not matter. If there is a bowling ball or a tennis ball going down, they will always reach the ground here at the same time, if we neglect air resistance. What else did he do? What do you think this is, those arches here? So he didn't have stopwatch, he didn't have photogate, but he made his own photogate. So they are. So the idea here is that he could move those such as between here and there, there will be one second. So he did a lot of experiment and something was, would uh, fall down and the time elapsed between here and there on here and there will be one second. So you see it's accelerating because it means in one second, whatever is going down is covering more distance. So how can you make sure that 
that you know that the ball is going through here if you don't have uh, electronics. It's a bell. He put a little bell, a bell. There was a bell here, right? And he, he will move those bells up and down until he gets exactly one second here. Isn't that uh, so smart? Huh? We'll never photo that. Very smart. Not only that, he need a way to time. So what did he use to time? You see something in the back here. What is it? What is that thing? A pendulum. When he was 17 years old, only so before, before that, when he was 17 years old, he discovered that the time it takes for a pendulum to go back and forth, right, only depends on the length of the pendulum. It doesn't depend on the mass. It doesn't depend where you start from. So if you take a pendulum exactly 25 centimeter long, okay, you can try that at home. You take a string. How oh, could be an idea for video? Someone asked me idea. Take 25 centimeter, and then you have a small mass. And the time it takes to go back and forth will be exactly one second. That, that's what he used as a stopwatch. The length has to be exactly 25 uh, centimeter. So I'm not good at the reaction time, but if I try to time, boom, boom. Uh, well, I'm very bad. It's supposed to be one, one. Up, up, about one second, okay? It's just because I have very bad reaction time. Boom, boom, okay, getting better. But that's the idea, so exactly one second. So that's what he did. And what did he find out? So he find out, so he didn't have calculus, right? So he find out that the one second, that was moving one unit of second. And then another sec uh, unit of distance. And then another second, it was moving by three. So maybe three inches. And then another second, that was five. And then another second, that was seven. Another second, that was nine. So let's lo look at the table here, T and the distance. So T equals zero, distance is zero. After one second, it's one. One second, the distance is one. After two seconds, what's the total distance covered? You have three here plus one. So it's going to be huh? four. Yeah, four. So imagine this is the number line here. OK, so now I'm located at four on the number line. What about three? What do you get? After three seconds, you're here. So it's going to be this plus this plus this. It's going to be nine. After four seconds, 16. Wow, look at that. Do you see the relationship? How do you go from one to one, two to four, three to nine, four to 16? You square. So he discovered that the distance, the total distance covered is proportional to g square. Okay? And that's the rule for anything accelerating at a constant rate. So it means uh, with a constant acceleration, spinning up at a constant rate. It, it didn't have the coefficient. The coefficient is one half times the acceleration. No, no, it didn't have that because you have to wait for Newton to invent calculus. The day Galileo died, the day after Newton was born, and I told you there was a black plague, he got bored, he was in lockdown, you know what to do, you know, there was no iPad, no, no internet. So he in, invented calculus and, and then uh, works. He worked on kinematics and dynamic. Isn't that interesting? So Newton said, if I have seen so far, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giant, meaning Galileo. Now, Galileo 
I had to write all that in a book because he was in a house arrest. If it was not, if he was not in a house arrest, home, home arrest, he would never have heard, written all that in a book. Okay, so let's move. Okay, so let's apply everything here. So you take the same kinematics equation, you're going to replace x by y, and you're going to replace the acceleration by negative 10. And that's what you're going to have here. Okay, so displacement equals v0t t minus 0 0.5 10 t squared. Do you understand that? Just you are replacing the acceleration by minus 10. And then you have this equation here where you replace a by minus 10. And you have this equation here where you replace a by minus 10. So it's the same kinematic equation, except that you're going to replace the acceleration by negative 10. Is that clear? Okay, I want to make sure that. So, for example, remember kinematic equations is delta y equals v0 t plus one half a t square. But now we're going to work with in free fall. So the acceleration is always negative 10. So that means delta y equals initial velocity times time plus 0 0.5 times minus 10 t square. That means half of negative 10, half of 10 is 5, so delta y equals v0t minus 5t squared. Now, if you do your assignment, then you're going to say negative 9.8, and here you're going to have negative 4.9. But when we do it in class, it's easier to take negative 10. Or you can say final position equals initial position, the same thing, plus v0t minus 5t squared. Okay, it's the same equation. Because you remember that the displacement is the final position minus the initial position, yes? Okay. The other equation, v equals v sub 0 plus at, so v equals v sub 0 minus 10 t. So free fall using the same equations, except x is replaced by y, and a is always negative 10, if, if you take up to be positive and down to be negative, and that you take the origin here, for example. OK? Is that clear? So you can have two scenarios, for example, you can decide to drop something here and the velocity, initial velocity is zero, you are just dropping. So in that case, the displacement is what, positive or negative? Negative, if you decide that up is positive, acceleration is also negative and it's going to speed up, yes? Now, if, you, if it's going up here, it's going to slow down, stop, and speed up. What's the velocity here at the top? Zero. And the time it takes to go up and down will be twice the time it takes to go up. So the first thing you do with those kinds of problems is to draw the axis here. And up is positive. No, 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 no. The, if you decide that up is positive, acceleration is always, always negative 10. Because the weight is always pulling down. Acceleration is the force. Okay? So, for example, here you are dropping a ball. And we're going to look at just the displacement. No, let's look at the velocity. So we're going to take my y-axis here. OK, so that's my y-axis. 
uh, I start here. The, the, the initial position is 80 meters, but for now I'm just focusing on the Y displacement. So initial velocity is zero. After one second, what's going to be the velocity? Acceleration is negative 10. Negative 10? Okay, so acceleration is negative 10. So the velocity is going to be negative 10. After two seconds, it's going to be what? Negative? Negative? 20. After three seconds, it's going to be negative? 30. After 4 seconds, it's going to be negative 40. After 5 seconds, negative 50. Okay, so you drop something, it's going to speed up at down. Okay, because the velocity changes by negative 10 every second. What about the y displacement? Just the displacement. Okay, so you start here. So let's, let's look at the kinematic equation. So delta y equals v0t minus 5t squared. So do you have a... Which slide is that? Do you have an initial uh, velocity here? You drop. You are not mad. mad. You just drop something. So is the initial velocity zero or not zero? Very good, so you can forget about that. So delta y equals minus 5t squared, yes? So at t equals zero, what's the displacement? Zero, yes, you plug it in. At t equals one, what do you have? Negative five, y negative four. If, if, if t equals one, so it's gonna be negative five times one is? Negative 5, yes? We plug it in, the displacement. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. What about at t equals 2? Negative 20. Do you all agree? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20, so negative 20. And t equals 3 is going to be negative 45. At t equals 4, Negative 80. Do you agree? Yes? So let's look at the position. So t equals 0, it was here. t equals 1, how much is 80? You start at 80. 80 minus 5, it's going to be 75. Okay? So after one second, it, it went down by 5. So here we have 75. At t equals 2, it goes down by 20. So where are we? 80 minus 20? 60. So this is uh, 60. This is 75. So you go down by, um, I forgot, 20. Okay. I don't put a minus, even though it's minus, it's just because I'm showing you it's going down, but you can put a minus if you want, so that's going to be 60. And then 80 minus 45. 45, yes. So you go down by 45. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 35. What about um, minus 80? 80 minus 80 is zero. You are here. So your displacement is minus 80. Your position on the number line is zero. You see how it works? Right? Well, you, here I just, I just started from 80. Now, if you want to find the equation, it will be y equals initial position minus 5t squared, so y equals 80 minus 5t squared, okay? And you will get the same thing, okay? Because my 80, what you start with, minus, you know, the displacement by how much you move down, okay? So it's the same thing as before. 
Yeah. How did I get what? How I get 45, it was t equals three. So it's gonna yeah. be three, uh, three times three is nine, nine times five is 45. So you went down by 45, okay? And then you do 80 minus 45 is 35. So that will be the position don't confuse the position and the displacement. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. okay, let's try that. Okay, why, why don't you try to do it on your own? You do, do the same thing. So you can help each other. Okay, so velocity at t equals zero, so you throw something in the air. So first thing you want to do is to have your y-axis. First thing you ever do, you have your y-axis here. And that's going to be zero here. So at t equals zero, what's the velocity? 20, okay? Because if it's zero, it's not going to go anywhere. You need to give some momentum up. At t equals one, it's going to be 10, right? Because it's losing 10 every second. So it's, it's always minus 10. So it's going to be 10. So here, velocity is 10. At t equals 2, it's going to be 0, very good, so it stop. At t equals 3, it's going to be negative 10. Look at that, the beautiful symmetry, okay? It was 10 at that position. It's going to be 10 at this position, but going down. At t equals 4, it's going to be... Okay, everything is symmetric. Everything makes sense if, if there is no air resistance, yes? Okay, so what about the displacement? So displacement equals initial velocity times time minus 5t squared. So delta y equals initial velocity is 20t minus 5t squared. So t equals zero, what's the displacement? Zero, because I didn't go anywhere. I am, it's in my hand. After uh, t equals one, that's gonna be 15, very good. So now the displacement is 15. Okay, so the location here, the position, so position displacement in that case, same is going to be at 15. At t equals 2, it's going to be, uh, you're right, it's going to be 0 because um, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 5 is 20, 20 minus 20 is going to be 0. 
No. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm tired. So it's going to be what? 20, right? Here, here it's going to be 20. Yeah, it's going to be 20. Okay. And then t equals 3 is going to be. Uh, 15 and t equals 4 it's going to be 0 okay so you see t equals 2 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 5 is uh, 20 but here you have uh, 20 times 2 is 40 40 minus 20 is 20 so you see u it comes back here is that clear it just turned out that the displacement is final position minus initial position on the number line. And in that case, the initial position is zero. So in that case, the displacement and the final position is going to be the same. Okay? Right? So it's, it's just the same thing as before. So if you want to make a graph, you see the position here is in green. So at t equals 1, it's at 15. At t equals 2, it's at 20. At t equals 3, it's at 15. At t equals 4, it's at 0 again. So we have position versus time that looks like a parabola curved down. Now, if you look at the velocity here in blue, you have to look up here. So at t equals 0, it's 20. At t equals 1, it's going to be 10. At t equals 2, it stops, and then it increases in magnitude again, okay? Because here it could be negative 10, negative 15. So it slow down, stop, and speed up, okay? The only confusing thing here is like this is for the velocity, and the, the scale is over there. Now, the time it takes to go up equals the time it takes to go down. Okay, so try this one. And for the the next assignment that I'm gonna post, I will add uh, like extra points for those who missed that number 10. So I will catch up. So instead of being over 100, maybe I will have it over uh, 110, for example. So it, it will give you extra points. OK, so what do they ask in the displacement? So displacement equals, so first of all, you, you want to make um, a y axis, okay? And okay, it makes sense to take the zero here. That's the first thing you want to do is, is to have your axis. Y axis or x axis, where is your zero? Well, you start your stopwatch. I start the stopwatch here. Initial position here is zero. What's the initial velocity is zero. So it's gonna be V zero T minus five T square. Initial velocity is zero, right? You all agree? Minus five t square. So what's going to be the displacement? Negative forty-five, right? And it's also going to be displacement. It's going to be the same as the position, right? So from here to there, it's going to be negative 45. What about the velocity? You do minus 10 every second, right? So after three seconds, it's going to be, yes, negative 30. So it means, um, that means that. 
So this is 30. Okay, we can do one more. Okay, let's try this. So each time you have a problem like this where they ask the maximum height, you have to remember the following, that at the maximum height, what's happening here with the velocity stops. So the, the velocity equals zero. Okay, so using that, you can find how high how high it's gonna go if you if you need extension for assignment you just have to let me know and i highly recommend that you work in a study group and and remember to have a book textbook you can do the solve problem so initial velocity is five final velocity is zero I should put a delta y here and a question mark. And time, we don't care. So we need to find an equation without time. So do you remember the equation without time? Look at your kinematics equation. You want one without time. Four, right? You say four. Tell me your name so I remember. So this one. And this one, make sure you substitute delta x by delta y because we are walking up and down. And that's going to be negative 10. So that equation will become v square equals v0 square minus 20 delta y. So when you are walking in uh, free fall, equation number four will become that because ac acceleration is negative 10. And we suppose that up is positive. Okay, so we have a positive here. That's going to be zero. Okay, so now you can plug in it. Because of e zero equals five square minus twenty delta y five square. Uh, five square. That that's the initial yeah. So zero equals twenty five minus twenty delta y. So delta y equals twenty divided by uh, no, 20 divided by 25. No, oh. no, I, I'm tired at 2 p.m. I'm so good at 10 a.m., but uh, 2 p.m. start to be tired. So it's 25 divided by 20. Okay. So it's going to be... So to 25 divided by 20, it goes one time... 1.25 so that will be your displacement and you know how you find the time okay always those problems you do it this way to find the height you have to say that the final velocity equals zero all the time okay now if you want to find the time it takes to go up then you use this equation here a equals final velocity minus initial velocity over the time. That will give you the time it takes to go up. So substitute here. Yes. So x minus minus x initial. So delta delta y is the same thing as the final position minus initial position. If you are along the y-axis, up and down, if you are right or left, you're going to say delta x equals x minus x sub zero. So this is if you are uh, 
right or left. This is if you are up and down. So in that case, because you start here, so just happen that the delta y will be the same thing as your final position because initial position equals zero. So would it be two for this line? So is it two? So we have minus, so let's substitute. You have minus, let's substitute minus 10 equals, what's the final position? Uh, final velocity is? Zero. Zero, exactly, minus five over t. So t equals, exactly, so uh, cross multiply divide, so uh, it's gonna be half, half seconds, right? You cross multiply divide, so minus five times one divided by minus 10 is 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, let me ask you something. How long is it gonna take to go back? It takes 0 0.5 to go up, 0 0.5. So the time of flight will be one very good okay and and i will get back to that number 10 